I know a lot of y'all looking at me like, where is she carrying that big old bag? Why is she bring that big old purse with her on stage? Because there's a lot of white people in here tonight, and y'all still. <laughs> Hate to be honest, but it's the truth. That's how a lot of black people got here. If you ask any Spanish person, they'll tell you. Uh, yeah, they still. That's, this was Mexico. I learned that in white history. <laughs> oh, booyah. Um, I feel like I could talk like this now because if Donald Trump could say whatever the fuck he wants, so can I. Matter of fact, here's a little secret about me. Y'all probably don't know right off of seeing me, but if you ever saw my paperwork, you would know this. Uh, I'm a white woman. Um, I am, I'm a white woman on paper. The census that came around to my house back in 2010, you know, that's when they count how many black people live in the neighborhood. And um, they had showed up to my house and they was like, how many people live in this household? I was like, it's, it's, it's just me. And they was like, what's the nationality? I was like, American. He was like, no, I need to know your race. I was like, for real? That's what we doing? We bringing racism to my front door? That's what we doing today on this day? What are you, colorblind? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. And I went back into my brain. I had a that's so raven moment, and I had a full-on conversation with myself. I was like, girl, this is your chance. What do you mean this is my chance? Obama said it's time for change. What do you mean he said it's time for change? Girl, you could be whatever you want to be. Well, shit, what should I be? Well, you got a car and you know a gang of Asians. You right, I do got a car and I do know a gang of Asians. Well, put that shit together. I'm Caucasian. He was like, okay. I was like, what? White magic. And I've been a white woman ever since. And my life has been fantastic. I'm going to tell you, three days after I became a white woman on paper, my grade score went up by 300 points. Last year, I slept with 87 dudes. Nobody called me a hoe or nothing. They said I was a businesswoman. I'm an entrepreneur. This is a home business. I was able to write my coochie off on my taxes last year. Six inches of office space. I have meetings in there. It's healing. I heal people with this. <laughs> Sorry, that's some bullshit. I just feel like I can say whatever I want to because it's America, man. Anything is possible. Anything is possible in this country. That is what's so awesome about America. That's why people come from all over the world to be right here. Because only in America you can be whatever the fuck you want to be. When a white man can win five gold medals, add some titties, keep his dick, and win woman of the year, you can be whatever the fuck you want to be in America. <laughs> When a white woman can teach African American studies, be the president of the NAACP, and don't nobody say shit until her mama and daddy tell on her, you can be whatever the fuck you want to be in America. My cousin, two-time felon, got out of jail, could not find a job, searched for a job for nine months. I told her straight up, just check the white box and see what happens. This bitch now works for Homeland Security, y'all. You can be whatever the fuck you want to be in America. Donald Trump is the president-elect. You can be whatever you want to be. Who knows? In five years, I could very well become the next leader of the KKK. And wouldn't that be some shit? I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll change a whole lot of things about the KKK. First off, only rich people can be in it. <laughs> so it's gonna be full of Asians, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we wouldn't wear those hoods, wouldn't wear those hoods. We would still wear white, because that look good on colored skin. But we wouldn't wear those hoods, because that fuck your hairline up, right? So we will wear satin do-rags, because that is nice and make your hair wave up pretty, okay? And don't fuck your hairline up. A lot of KKK members got fucked up hairlines. Stress from hate. Hate fuck your hairline up. <laughs> we wouldn't do this no more. This right here, fuck your rotator cuff up. This ain't good for your rotator cuff. So we wouldn't do that. We would do this right here. Hey, that's a whole body workout right there. That's good for you. And we'd be like, white magic, fuck that white power, white magic. Cause I'm into Harry Potter. <laughs> and I mean, it's like the grand wizard or grand fucking wizard, right? That's the head that, you knew that shit. That's how I know you got an uncle in it. So look me up, get me in there. It's, it's one dick away, not me. I'm just playing, I don't know. <sighs> Any questions? <laughs> I have a very vivid imagination, y'all. I got a big imagination because I grew up in foster care. Anybody else grew up in foster care? Make some noise. If you was in the system, 
I'm the only special motherfucker here, all right. I'm special, I'm special, I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Like, y'all mamas and daddies had to love y'all, they didn't get paid for it or nothing, they had to love you, okay? Everybody house I went into from the time I was 11 made money off of me, bitch, I'm valuable, okay? They made money because of me, I am valuable. The state of California paid a lot of money to make sure I don't die, because they knew I was gonna be somebody. They was like, that's gonna be a white woman one day. <laughs> We gotta take care of her. I'm magical, I don't give a fuck. I remember when I first went into foster care, I didn't like it though. I didn't like it because kids was mean. They see the police come and get us and everything. They just pick on me. I wanted to play tetherball. That was my game. That was my sport. I just wanted to play tetherball. Y'all remember tetherball? It was a little yellow ball connected to the white rope around that black pole. You hit that motherfucker and it feels so good. And sometimes you play your enemy and hit him in the face and they nose bleed and be like, yeah, I run the fucking playground. It's, it's a great game for stress. <laughs> I got a tetherball pole in my backyard right now. <laughs> I get stressed, I'm like, fine. I would go to jail otherwise, because I still look black. But still, anyway. I'm just a white woman with a tan. Anyway. <laughs> I remember I hated it at first, because kids used to make fun of me. It was this chick named Kiyosha. She wouldn't let me play tetherball. She'd be like, uh-uh, Tiffany, only people with mamas and daddies can play. I'd be like, damn, Kiyosha, we don't even know if that's your real daddy. That's not fair to me. And she'd be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, you can't play. I'd be like, see, this is messed up, Kiyosha. Just because you 15 in the sixth grade don't mean you get to dictate what goes on on the playground. She's like, shut up and go to the back of the line. You're not playing today. Right, so three weeks of this bullying, three weeks of her picking on me, three weeks of telling her telling me don't nobody love me, it pissed me off. By the third week, I had my very first psychotic break, y'all. I fucking lost it. I was in like, I'm gonna play today. In my life, I'm playing today. She ain't gonna stop me from playing today. I was talking like I was in a Negro spiritual song or something. Like I was in Roots, well, today's the day. I'm gonna hit that yellow ball today. <laughs> Get up to the front of the line. She like, mm-mm, Tiff uh -uh, Tiffany, only people with mamas and daddies can play. I fucking snapped. I was like, look. <laughs> you know what? You know what, Kiyoshi? You know what? You know what, Kiyoshi? You know what? You know what, Kiyoshi? Because that's what black women do when they get upset. They repeat themselves over and over and over again. And they throw this hand out here like this because they about to snatch your soul out your body. <laughs> On some Indiana Jones, not be down shut the day type shit. You got to snatch your whole spirit out. You got to Kali ma your heart. You understand me? I was like, you know what? You know what, Kiyoshi? You know what? You know what, Kiyoshi? You right. You right. I don't have no mama, no daddy. But you know what I do got? You know what I do got, bitch? You know what I do got? You know what I do got, bitch? You know what I do got? You know what I do got, bitch? I got a judge and a lawyer, ho. Do you got a judge and a lawyer? No, nope, because you're not special. And you know what else I got, Kiosha? You know what else I got? You know what else I got, Kiosha? You know what else I got? You know what else I got, Kiosha? You know what else I got? I got a social worker that come and see me every two weeks. Do you got a social worker that come and see you every two weeks? No, nope, because you're not special, bitch. And you know what else? You know what else, Kiosha? You know what else? You know what else, Kiosha? Your mama and daddy been paying taxes since before you was born. And if you die tomorrow, they'll still be paying taxes after that. You know what them tax dollars do? Pay for my judge and my lawyer and my social worker, bitch. So your mama and daddy love me way more than they love you, bitch. She beat the dog shit out of me on that program. Had me hanging from the tetherball pole, the police showed up, I pressed charges. She ended up with a judge and a lawyer, it felt good. It was like, what goes around comes around. The best part, the best part of that whole story is, about two years ago, I was at Walmart, right? In Puente Hills. And then guess who was working at the Walmart as a greeter? Kiyosha, old raggedy ass. And she had a dead leg. I was like, look at your ass, Kiyosha. Look at you, that's what happens to bullies, bitch. Limbs die. That's what you get. Ain't here looking like yo ho, yo ho. You should have went to Disneyland and got a job, bitch. Hey, <laughs> shoot. I hate that bitch. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to go over there and spit on her. <laughs> then I know I would get arrested as a white woman because that's what white women get arrested for. <laughs> Stupid shit. Beating and killing our husbands. That's all we get arrested for. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I started.
started to fall in love with foster care though. Once I got in there good and I started moving around, I really started to fall in love with it because I realized how awesome it was. Like my very first foster family, they were Hispanic. They taught me how to speak Spanish. Me mucho gusto bailar, me encantan los hamburguesas y los tacos, papi chulo, comer mi panocha. And I always have fun when I say that in Mexico because the Spanish do go down on me. And <laughs> they taught me how to cook. I know how to make enchiladas, carne asada tacos, pico de gallo. I know how to make pupusas, tamales, uh, uh, menudo. Or chata from scratch. They taught me how to cut grass. They taught me how to deliver babies. I know how I can build a house from the ground up, no problem. Um, I know how to do plumbing. I know how to fix anything on the car. I can rebuild a transmission. I can change tires, do the brakes, all that. They even they even taught me how to install a horn so I can install that horn. They go, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. I know how to do that. They also taught me I was a the very I was a lead accordion player in a mariachi band. I was a very very first African American female to play the accordion in the mariachi band. I toured all over Southern California. I did quinceañeras every weekend between quinceañeras and bar mitzvahs. I was getting it, okay? And I was doing shows in, all over LA and then we went down to Mexico and to Arizona. I was on El Telemundo, El Televisión. Black girl playing the accordion. I was famous, bitch. It was great. And then my, my, my foster dad got deported on some weed charges or whatever, which was fucked up. But then I ended up having to go live with some Jews and I was scared as hell. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I was so afraid to live with them because the Mexicans had told me what the Jews had did to Jesus and I was like, oh shit, what's gonna happen to me? Because I'm a carpenter and I got curly hair too, what the fuck? Like, but turns out they were nice and kind people. They 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 were so kind to me. They threw me about mitzvah. They taught me how to speak Hebrew. I'm circumcised now. So it feels good when I walk fast. And, uh, and then after being there for about a year, my grandma got custody of me, and that's when I learned how to gang bang and braid hair. So I feel like I'm a well-rounded individual. <laughs> Any questions? Anything before I go? Y'all scared? What?